All right, first graders. So yesterday we had something amazing happen. First, we had a real herpetologist. That's someone who studies lizards and reptiles come to our morning meeting and show us her gargoyle gecko, gecko and her blue tongued skink. Well, then we read all about lizards. Guess what we're gonna do now? We're gonna read about a real scientist, another herpetologist. Um, in this book, it's called The Lizard Lady. This is a nonfiction book. This is a teaching book. And we're gonna read to find out who is the lizard lady and what does she do? The Lizard Lady by Jennifer Keats Curtis and Dr. Nicole F. Angeli. Illustrated by Veronica V. Jones. Shh, did you hear that? Shree, shree. Quietly, Nicole creeps toward a shriveled pile of dried brown leaves. She spots a skinny little insect, a green walking stick, blending in with a green plant. He is not making any noise. She tilts her head, listening carefully. She hears the shrill, shree, 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 of a pearly-eyed thrasher, an insect hunter. Ooh! I hope she doesn't hunt the walking stick. Nicole sweeps thorns from her pants. She wipes sweat from her face. It is time to get out of the blinding sun. With a sigh, she sits in the she sits in the shade of a cactus and sips her water. Suddenly, Nicole hears a sound. Scratch, scratch, scratch. She tiptoes closer to a heap of leaves and spies large land crabs. Smiling, she uses a stick to startle the red-bodied creatures. They duck sideways into their underground homes. So it seems like so far this book is telling us about what it's like to be a herpetologist what it's like to be someone who studies reptiles. Nicole is not looking for insects or crabs. She is searching for the critically endangered animal. That means very close to becoming extinct. The St. Croix ground lizard. Nicole is a scientist who studies these lizards. The people on the island call her the lizard lady. The Lizard Lady searches for St. Croix ground lizards on four small islands on St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Why aren't they on St. Croix? Well, in the 1800s, farmers on St. Croix brought mongooses to the island. This is a mongoose. The farmers thought the mongoose would eat the rats that were eating their sugarcane crops. The mongooses didn't eat all the rats. The rats figured out how to climb trees to get away. Mongoose can't climb well, so instead they ate sea turtle eggs and birds. And almost every single St. Croix ground lizard on St. Croix. Wow. The ground lizards will never be able to live on St. Croix again unless all of the mongooses are removed. Fortunately, the lizards have survived on two tiny islands, the Protestant K and the Green K. Here's the Protestant K and the Green K. To save these little reptiles from extinction, scientists plan to bring St. Croix ground lizards from the two Ks to new homes on the nearby Ruth Island and Buck Island. Did their idea work? Here's Ruth Island and here's Buck Island. Today, the lizard lady has come to Buck Island to find out. Wow, so that's so cool. So the lizard wasn't able to live on St. Croix because there were too many mongoose that were eating them. So the lizard lady thought, why don't we move them to a new home on Ruth Island and Buck Island and see if they can live safely and happily there. Since the lizards use the sun to warm up, Nicole searches for them during the hottest, brightest parts of the day. At night when it's rains or when it is cloudy, the lizards stay warm and dry by hiding in underground burrows. Off Nicole hikes in her heavy boots. She carries a notebook and pencils, a machete to cut vines, a GPS flagging tag, a cell phone, a whistle, 
in case her phone doesn't work, a small empty cooler to safely store lizards, and a gallon of water. The lizard lady hikes over the ridge into the dense Caribbean forest and across the sandy beaches. She uses the machete to whack her way through thick plants, heavy brush, and sometimes even giant spider webs. But the lizards are hard to see, but Nicole is an expert tracker. Sometimes she hears a lizard before she can even hear them. Shh, did you hear that? Scratch, scratch, scratch. A lizard is hungrily prowling, through, looking for small prey. Cockroaches, crickets, moths, termites, ants, and small hermit crabs in the leaves. Oh, there it is. There, Nicole sees two tiny eyes of an alert lizard watching her. Using a long pole with a knotted loop on the end, Nicole slowly slips the rope over its head. As it tightens, the reptile rolls to get away. Quickly, before it escapes, Nicole snatches its belly and legs. This one is feisty. St. Croix ground lizards have sharp, serrated teeth, but they are small, so Nicole doesn't mind a curious nibble on her fingers. That reminds me of Linus. He has teeny little teeth, but they don't hurt. Nicole carefully drops the lizard into her cooler before recording the GPS coordinates and tying flagging tape on a branch. She packs up her gear and heads to a shack near the beach. There, she keeps a ruler, a scale, and her notebook. She measures and weighs the lizard. When she finished, Nicole put the lizard into the cooler and hikes back to the spot where she knows she caught it. She sees the flagging tape, so she knows exactly where to release it. She opens the cooler and it races away. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Nicole listens. The lizard is meandering through the leaf litter towards its underground home, eating termites the whole way along. So she took her information, she measured him, and she sent him back. The idea to move the lizards is working, but the work is not done. The lizard lady is among a group of scientists who monitor, that means check on and watch, the lizards each year. These lizards live on small islands without mongooses, one day, if the mongooses are removed from St. Croix, the lizards could return to their native island, but not today. Today, it's time for the lizard lady to go home. Nicole turns on the boat's engine and unties it from the dock. As she leaves the island behind, a flock of brown pelicans soar overhead. She spots a sea turtle <gasps> surfacing to take a breath. Over the bow, flying fish glint like silver flashes. It's just another day in the life of the lizard lady. Wow. Wow. This is very cool. Oh, and there's even a recommendation. If you enjoy this book, look for other Arborddale books that might be of interest. After a while, Crocodile, Amphibians and Reptiles. Ooh, a compare and contrast book. You might need to check that out. Dear Komodo Dragon, and Little Skink's Tail. <gasps> so first graders, we learned so much today about what it's like to be a herpetologist, specifically what Dr. Nicole was doing, and she was trying to save the skink. She had an idea of how to help an animal, and she tried it out. It's pretty cool. Tomorrow, we're gonna to read another book about a different type of reptile and see what we can learn about them. It's pretty cool learning about all these different animals. Can't wait to learn with you again tomorrow. See you then.